Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, and sisters. This is episode 41 of the Wacky Random Challenge. <clears throat> it has been far too long since I've recorded one of these. I've been very, very busy, so for fans of the series, I wholeheartedly apologise. But here is the next instalment. Let us see what it is going to be. For this episode, it is going to be... The Aston Vantage GT12 or the Ford Mustang GT, Cicadio Sprint, medium cloud of rain. Well, no snow, because the Formula Rays Group 5, oh god, I'm going to be mullet. Road C and Road E against the Formula Rays Group 5s and RS1 trophies. Yeah, let's do it. Not particularly good with the Mustang, but it's fine. What's the worst that can happen? So at the time of recording, uh, not long come off a uh, solo cast of F1 for AOR, and wow, what an amazing race that was at uh, Paul Ricard. Oh, it's been so long I've actually forgotten how to do this. Right, uh, Ford Mustang GT is from the Ford first. Mustang GT, where are you? There you are. Against... Uh, so one trophy group five and the Formula A. Whoops, something's popped up there. Formula A. Okay. At Sakito Sprint again, a track uh, track I'm not particularly good at. Uh, let's run the rain. Run the rain in the slower car. Uh, default date. Yes, right. Uh, I think we're good to go. Oh, rules. Here yeah, we have those off. Right, so what have I been up to? Well, let's see. Formula 1 for AOR. As always good. Uh, my faithful companion Hamish was actually working, so he couldn't join me. Oh, my goodness. was literally battling from lights to flag. It was absolutely amazing. Good, good fun. Love that. And the biggest thing recently, over the last couple of days, was I was part of the production crew for the McLaren Shadow Project semi-finals. Uh, it wasn't originally going to be me, I was parachuted in at the last minute, as the person that was going to do it was unwell, as was their children. Eight Formula A's, eight RSO1's, eight Group 5's and eight Roadies, of which I'm last in. <laughs> it knew. So... Yeah, I was in control of spectator cameras. Oh, it wasn't too far wrong with that gear change. Yes, I was in control of spectator cams. So that was amazing. In short, I would select a camera to use for the spectator view in game, of which there were five actually being run. Whoa, that's a long way off. Oh. That didn't go well. And I would uh, give advice on what uh, what things I would need to cover the games we did. The five games were real racing, yes, the uh, the app. Don't ask, don't know. That was an unusual choice. It was basically the, the games through which the competitors... Uh, well, sorry, there was... Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's right. The games through which the com competitors qualified. So, Real Racing was one of them. There was R Factor 2. That did not go well. I Racing, which had a, an unusual technical issue. I'll explain in a bit. Whoa! Whoa, that's going to have a lot of water in it. Oh dear, I knocked the cable out of my headphones. <laughs> Try that again. Uh, so yeah, so it was R Factor 2, uh, Real Racing 3, sorry about that, um, High Racing, Project Cars 2, and Forza Motorsport 7. Now Forza was the one I knew least about because I'd never touched it, uh, as I don't own an Xbox, never have, never particularly wanted to. The interface really was is not one for much like eye racing in that sense. It, it's just not made for mass viewing. It's made for watching your own performances. So we had to kind of make do. But 
yeah, that one gave us the least amount of headaches, really. So, as I found out I was doing this, well, I was offered it, I wasn't told I was doing it, to be fair. Oh dear, the day before it was going on. Uh, the person that was going to be doing it messaged me and said, Defense isn't paid work for the next two days. Oh, well, yeah, go on then. And I said, yeah, be at the McLaren Technology Centre tomorrow, which is about uh, 90 miles away from here. It took me two hours to get there. Oh. Lots of water. Ah, yeah, I'm not surprised the Formula Rays are coming up to lap meter soon. So, I arrive on Friday, which is kind of like set up and make it work day. And, oh, come on. So I met some people I was going to be working with, and initially was kind of said you were told you know you're really early we're not going to need you for a while so make yourself comfortable which I, I did I was just happy to be you know surrounded by McLaren you know I, was, I wasn't in the main technology center they this was like a, a conference room or a conference building but it was very much very space age you know there was not a, a mark or a, a scuff anywhere every other thing was completely immaculate which made me feel like oh, I can't touch anything They had a, a McLaren 720S in the cafeteria, which was uh, quite a nice thing to see. And uh, so then I met the people I was going to be working with. There was, I would say, at least two different production companies involved in this thing. At least 60 people, or about 60 people, I would have thought. Imagine like a, a newsroom control center where you've got screens with lots of different camera feeds and all sorts going on, and all the people controlling it, sound and lighting, and you, you get the idea of the scale of this event from McLaren. And essentially I was I was like a, an advisor for them on how the spectators side was going to work, because none of them, are, even though this, this particular production company made things for like gaming events from what I understand none of them were particularly gamers they might have a, a you know a passing understanding but none of them were you know, avid gamers or of course with my commentary experience I had understandings of you know how games how the games themselves functioned you know certain limitations or, or what have you just filling in the gaps in the knowledge that they didn't have in their own organization and I was very, very well looked after, I must say. From beginning to end, uh, I was very, very happy about that. So I talked through various things I, I felt we were going to need for... Um, like, for instance, in PCARS 2, I needed a second machine for a uh, director and kept the main one for broadcaster. They had no idea about those functions, so I used you know, one of the, the producers. Oh, that's off. I, I used his laptop, and it ran absolutely flawlessly. The rig they gave me had a, a 1080 Ti and an i7-8700, I think, in it. It was a, a pretty damn amazing machine. Uh, and they'd hired it, so... I dread to think how much this event cost McLaren. I dread to think. I mean, one of the competitors was from Japan, for instance. Three of the competitors had their own translators. That was, uh, I think, paid for by McLaren as well. Or paid for by someone. It wasn't people that had flown over for, with the competitors. The only name I recognised was Igor Fraga. I recognised him from last year's F1 Esports uh, races. 
Uh, but I didn't recognise any of the other competitors. And the people I was working with were absolutely brilliant. Um, like I say, very well, you know, looked after me. Just didn't make me feel like an outsider at all, even though, like, you know, I'm I, there as a company of one. Um, you know, these are, you know, companies 30-odd strong. Um, they really... It, they, they didn't kind of, oh, you're an outsider, are you? You know, there's nothing like that. They were just very happy that I was there because they didn't have the knowledge that made the difference. Like, for instance, in iRacing, when we did iRacing, we actually used a version, a very heavily modified version, of the AOR interface. So, they did make it on the stream briefly. Um, because all, the whole thing was streamed on McLaren's own YouTube page. So whenever, if you if you guys have a look at that, uh, any time the game footage cuts to an offboard shot, that is me. That's my shot that I've offered to the director. And looking at the transmitting feed, uh, looked like they used most of them. The one that definitely gave us the most headaches was R Factor Two. When we rehearsed it on the Saturday, it was you know all was well. Come. So, sorry, on the Friday, on the Saturday, which was the live day, we were getting lags, something awful. We had cars going sideways, cars disappearing. And of course, so were the competitors getting this. But, so what they did, because our factor was a pre-record, it wasn't done live. Um, as soon as we recorded the race, they gave it to, you know, there was an editor there, and he had to spend the next something like two hours going through all the footage and cutting out the worst bits where cars were just going sideways off the track and then re-materialising in the place they should have been and stuff like that. I was getting like four to five second lag spikes and then 400 to 500 pings afterwards. It was awful and there was no reason for it because it hadn't happened the day before. They restarted the server, we'd gone to a backup one no amount of rejoins or any alterations were making a difference. So, who knows? And when we recorded that, we weren't streaming at the time, so it wasn't something the company was doing, the production company was doing. So either... And, and they did come up to me afterwards and say, what on earth was... what caused that? And I said, to be honest, it's one of two things. Either something's gone wrong with the server, or someone is blasting the life out of the, the connection at, at the NTC neither of which you have any control over, nor can you do anything about. So, that happened. The iRacing interface uh, issue was a bit of a shame, because I'd actually got, you know, I was using it. We were, you know, it was a seven lap race at Kota, if I remember. And it was really, you know, there was a, a constant three-way scrap for the lead. It was awesome. But they'd set the iRacing up, accounts up as McLaren Shadow 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, the overlay uses the account name and it can't be altered. So on the overlay, it said M1, M2, M3, M4, as it's designed to do. And we'd done loads to this. We'd taken branding out on their request. We'd shortened the interface down to only have eight drivers in there. We've done a lot of changes. Oh, the colour scheme as well, because originally the colours were orange. I think Dom had done that to match the F1 team colours. They wanted it blue, like the McLaren Shadow colours, which, I mean, that one makes sense. That one we at least kind of did in time, as in, you know, we had... They'd asked us to do that before we were live. They were asking us to make, like, the branding changes whilst the practice was going on. Thankfully, the practice wasn't broadcast, so I had time to sort of say, Dom, I need help! That's Nicholas Domino from AOR, I'm afraid. He's, he's, without him, that, in, that interface wouldn't exist. That's all his own handiwork. Oh, I might as well avoid being lapped so far. Ah. Managed to finish on the lead lap. Last, but yeah, well. Boing. Whew. 
Uh, lap times. Let's have a look. 136.0. Much slower than everybody else. So yeah, the the issue with the naming on the iRacing thing was that you know about halfway through the race, I had a guy jump up to me and say, "This this overlay is wrong." I said, "It's not wrong," and I'd gone through in meticulous detail what would happen and why to several different people. But such is the nature of the beast. A medium cloud for this one. So it was a shame I had to turn the overlay off. For the second half of the iRacing racing thing, and then Forza, <laughs> that was the, there was a, a big cock up there because we were having a real stonk of a race, um, you know, good three to four way battle for the lead, and we were getting the camera changes really really good because on the spectator cam for Forza, the spectators four seconds behind live for some uh, odd reason, but also there's like a, um, a transition phase, so the screen goes black, and it's put me last again. The screen goes black, and then after a couple of seconds, the image I, the person I've selected appears. Oh, noise. And then, um, so we we got that transition absolutely nailed. And then by about lap seven, so there's a ten lap race of Spa in like, a real monstrous 900. Uh, I think it was P1s, if I remember, 900 red horsepower or something. You know, silly amount of horsepower of McLaren sports cars. Um, no, GT, uh, GT cars. Um, I can't remember exactly. But, uh, they, they were pretty damn rapid. But Spa's a big place. Ah, Rocket Bunny. That's a Group 5. What's he doing back here? And um, yeah, lap seven comes along and say we've been doing really, really well. And they said, emergency, we've set the server up wrong, everyone's going to run out of fuel. And they did. <laughs> so uh, that had to be redone. That was supposed to be a pre record, but then they didn't have time to redo it. Uh, and they had golden ball. Yeah, the golden boy of the Overwatch League commentary on Rocket League commentary fame. Oh, that's not going to take that corner. They had him shoutcast again, along with another. I didn't recognise the name of the other one. I don't remember it now. But they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. I would love to have met Golden Boy, but unfortunately I didn't get the chance to. Yeah, it was a great, great change. When we did rerun Forza, it was nowhere near as good as far as the racing was concerned. And, um, but the camera transitions worked just as well. Um, yeah, so there were a few little issues like that. Um, so we were finished by about 10 o'clock or so. You know, on live night, which was the Saturday, and then began my two hour journey home. I did stop part way through just to grab something to eat. There was all those sort of fast food places to shut by then. So, it was uh, some crisps and chocolate and some fizzy drinks on the way home. Had a, had a news agent in a Set services at Fleet. <sighs> but yeah, it was an amazing experience. Loved every second of it. The feedback I had was uh, pretty positive, so they were quite happy with me. I felt I did a good job. There's one thing for you to feel you did a good job. You kind of needed. You should really have that validated by somebody else thinking you, <laughs> you did a good job. And yeah, I, I've had very positive feedback. From some very key people in the organisation. So who knows? I may get to do something like that again. 
I may never hear from them again. But I made the I made the right impressions of the right people. That's all I can really say at this stage. Oops, that's off. But the people I work with, the companies themselves, were absolutely brilliant. Like I said, they looked after me very well, but just how they handled everything was absolutely great. I mean, it's quite clear that this is what they do. They, the whole reason I was there was because they can make great television. But as far as sort of game, in-game stuff, the you know, actual controls, the mechanics, what to expect, how it works, essentially, was not what they knew. They're not gamers. They, as I say, they're, they're TV producers. Trying to do eye racing spectator cams without using Atvo, for instance, was uh, a prime example. You know, they'd never heard of it. Well, of course I wouldn't. Unless they've, they've kind of done. Oops! Ah, oh, tried to cut the first part of the yes is a little bit too fine. Last again. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't know of Atvo unless you've had reason to. Use spectatory type stuff in iRacing. I hadn't heard of it until I first commentated iRacing for AOR. But then I, I'm not an iRacing racer. I don't have my own account and never will have, I imagine. So, yeah, that's basically been. And then when I got home, I so I was at home at about 10 past midnight. This morning, my dogs were happy to see me at that time of night. <laughs> and uh, today I've been exceedingly zombified. But yeah, I loved it. Abs, great, great experience. I hope to do it again, but like I say, it's uh, not my decision. Hopefully, if I do get to uh, work with Golden Boy again, hopefully I'll get to meet him. He's, uh, he's uh, quite a famous shoutcaster in the esports world. I think I, I looked at his Twitter today, and uh, he's going to be... At the beginning of next year, 2019, he's going to be shoutcasting a fitness thing, I think? That uh, Dwayne Johnson is is hosting so Intri intriguing oh. oh here come the former A's Interesting moment happening in uh, tonight's commentary because I ooh, ow. because I was uh, because I was solo. I didn't really have a chance to look at chat very much. But early on, uh, I had um, I had someone in the chat saying, "When is this kind of commentator going to stop talking?" Hmm. I'm a commentator. It's rather my job to talk. 
and somebody and somebody straight afterwards said he's a commentator and this isn't a horse race <laughs> Made me smile. Well, here come the RSO ones. Bishop, I brought up to you again, have I? Ah, not in, not in time to overtake him. Lap times, let's have a look. Uh, 25-2. Oh, only close to that one guy. <laughs> Whew. Well, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.